Good evening and welcome to Wednesday Night Nuggets. I'm Pastor Colin Ford at Alum Rock Christian Church in San Jose, California. And we'd like to take a moment out during the week just to see what God's Word has to say to us. Tonight, we welcome back for the third session Andy Diaz, who is go going to complete his nugget on the 70 weeks prophecy of Daniel. And I hope you've been able to see, especially as we contemplate Easter, how this prophecy fits in with the coming of Christ. Lord God, please take your word and allow us to apply it to our lives and give us wisdom and understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. So we've been talking about the 70 weeks of Daniel, and actually now we're down to the 69 weeks of Daniel, and we're going to leave one week pending. This is part three of a three-part series. If you missed it, you can go back a couple weeks on Wednesday night and watch it from a previous uh, message. A seal is partially opened. Messiah, or the Christ, came in the fullness of time. So Daniel, now this is my rendition. Uh, I've read it to you from uh, the NIV. You can read it in multiple versions, and you'll see that this is, uh, I, I just tried to clarify a few words. No one search this out. From the time the command goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah, the ruler, there will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble. So we have two points here. The order that goes out to rebuild Jerusalem till Messiah. We have 69 weeks. We have seven weeks plus 62. Seven plus 62 gives 69 weeks. And after that 69th week, in other words, after the 7 plus 62 weeks, Messiah would be cut off and would have nothing. From the time the command goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah. Now, those are our two reference points. 7 plus 62 gives 69 weeks of years. And we re previously looked at that a week is seven years. In, in, the, in the context here. A week can be seven days, but it also can be seven years. And in this context, it's clearly seven years. Uh, so seven plus 62 gives 69 weeks of years. So 69 times seven is 483 years. From the time the order is given until Messiah, there were going to be 483 years. That's the prediction. Now, I have an assumption here, and it's based, uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit here in a minute, the prophetic year, we're talking a year, uh, about a year that's 360 days, not 365 and almost a quarter, no. That, that's the mathematical number for uh, the solar uh, year today. But back in the days, they had to simplify the year for a variety of reasons, and life got complicated because the solar equinox and the, and the springtime, etc., they, they were diff difficult and confusing. And so it appears, and this is an assumption, but I'm going to explain a little bit why we came to this assumption, that 483 years times 360 days gives 173,880 days from the time the order is given to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the day that Messiah enters into Jerusalem and is, and is received as king. We're going to see that this is fulfilled to the day. Now, where did we get this idea of the prophetic year of 360 days? Well... 
The first easiest part is the calendar. I mean, approximately 30 days a month, and that's based on the moon. It's about 30 days from the time the moon goes around, right? From no moon to a full moon to no moon again. That's about a 30-day cycle. So if you average that out and there are 12 months in a year, typical year, although in some years in the, in the Jewish calendar there were 13 years because they had to add in to intercalate, etc. Uh, just like what we do every four years, we add a year. I mean, we add a day to our year. And of course, every century we don't add the day unless it's... So there are all these little complications. So that's one reason. But then if we go to the scriptures, we can see in Daniel 7.25... And I don't know if I was going to read this, but I think I will read this. Chapter 7, verse 25. Oh, sorry. That's 8. Here we go. He will speak against the Most High, it's talking here about the Antichrist, and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and laws. The holy people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times, and half a time. Now the word time in the Hebrew, actually this is in Aramaic, the word time is a singular, the word times is a dual plural that refers to two, and then the half a time is half a year. So you have one year plus two years plus half a year. And this is repeated in Hebrew in chapter 12, verse 7, and it's repeated in Greek in the book of Revelations, which I won't read to you. You can go and read them. But a time, one. Times, they had two different kinds of plurals. They had a dual plural, meaning referring to two, and they had a multiple plural referring to more than two. So one plus two plus half gives three and a, I mean, three and a half years. And that same time is referred to in a number of other places. We read last week that in Daniel chapter 9, 27, it says, in the middle of the seven years, in the middle of the week. In other words, at the midpoint of the week. So what's half of seven years? Three and a half years. And in Revelations, in two parts, it says 42 months. And 42 months is three and a half years. Now, with, without this last reference, we couldn't put it together. But in Revelation chapter 12, verse 6, it goes back to all of this and puts it all together, and it says 1,260 days refers to this half of this seven-year period. So you take 1,260 days, and you divide it by 42, and you get 30 days a month. And if you have 30 days a month and multiply it times 12, you have 360 days a year, and that's where, we, that's where Sir Robert... Anderson, in 1894, I believe, I forget the year exactly, and then later on Harold Honer in the year 1977 wrote about this. And these are some of my references. Dr. Uh, I mean, Josh McDowell was a well-known Christian apologist, uh, wrote a book called Daniel in the Critics' Den, where he defended Daniel and his ability to predict the future because Everybody agrees that Daniel wrote before Jesus was born. Dr. David Jeremiah, uh, a current Christian radio and TV personality, uh, also has written a book called The Handwriting on the Wall. Uh, I just showed you The Coming Prince by Sir Robert Anderson. By the way, he was a high-ranking official of Scotland Yard, so his job was to investigate crime and find the suspect. So he took his skills and applied them to uh, the scriptures to defend the Bible against all the people that were attacking it. And then Dr. John E. Walvoord was the president of Dallas Theological Seminary for 34 years, and one of his friends, Dr. Harold W. Honer, uh, served as the director of the PhD department for 30 plus years at Dallas Theological Seminary. And then Johnston M. Cheney, this is an interesting guy, he was just a he didn't have a theological degree, he hadn't studied uh, anything, you know, profound. He was sick, and so while he was sick, he took the four Gospels and made them into one book. He took every, every, he didn't leave any words out, and he put it all together, and he made a beautiful story that aligns all four Gospels together. And you think, wow, because when you read them, you think they're contradictions, and you find out, oh, they're complementary. 
It's, they're synchronized. It's kind of like when you get three different people giving three different testimonies, and they're telling the truth, and they seem to have discrepancies, but it's because you didn't get some of the little kinks and little, they, didn't add, they missed something out or they added something in, and you kind of, it didn't all work together. Daniel's prediction. Seven plus 62 is 69 years. 69, sorry, weeks of years. 69 times 7 is 483 um, years. Times 360 gives 173,880 days from the time the command is given to rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah. So what's the first, what's the beginning point? How is this fulfilled? When was the command given to restore and rebuild Jerusalem? Well, Nehemiah chapter 2, verses 1 through 9. In the months of Kislev, in the 20th year while I was in the citadel of Susa, Hanani, one of my brothers, sorry, chapter 2. I was reading from verse, chapter 1. Chapter 2, sorry. In the month of Nisan, now Nisan is the spring month, it's right now. Nisan starts, I'm not sure exactly, it's, uh, it's the Hebrew calendar, but it's, it co-aligns with Passover. Passover happens during the month of Nisan, just as Easter happens during the month of Nisan. In the month of Nisan, in the 20th year of King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought for him, so Nehemiah is the cupbearer for the king. He brings the wine to the king, and he says, here you are, sir. So the king looks at him and says, hmm, you got to be trustworthy if you're going to serve wine to the king, because you want to make sure there's no poison in that wine. King Artaxerxes, when wine was brought before him, I took the wine and gave it to the king. I had not been sad in his presence before, so the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you're not ill? This can only be, this can be nothing but sadness of heart. The, uh, another translation says, why do you look depressed? So, you're not supposed to be depressed when you serve the king, right? If you're serving the president of the United States, you're going to try and, you're just serving him food. I mean, they can get rid of you like this. Nobody's, they're not going to make a big scandal because you got fired because you were serving food. Nah. So, king, the king says, why are you sad? Why are you depressed? I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why shouldn't my face look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? The king said to me, what is it you want? Then I prayed to the God of heaven and I, and I answered the king, if it pleases the king, if your servant has found favor in his sight, let him send me to the city in Judah where my ancestors are buried so that I can rebuild it. What city does he want to rebuild? Nehemiah is a Jew. He wants to go back and rebuild Jerusalem. And the king at that time has, this is the king of Persia. He has authority over that part of the world. Then the king with the queen sitting beside him asked me, how long will your journey take? And when will you be back? It pleased the king to send me, so I set a time. I also said to him, if it pleases the king, may I have letters to the governors of Trans-Euphrates so that they will provide me safe conduct until I arrive in Judah? And may I have a letter to Asaph, keeper of the royal park, so he will give me the timber to make beams for the gates of the citadel by the temple and for the city wall and for the residence I will occupy? And because the gracious hand of my God was on me, the king granted my requests. Imagine, you're going to travel through a number of countries, and this is before air travel. You have to go through these places, all these different ethnic groups that hate each other, and the king that's in charge, and he's given you authority. He says, here. You are my emissary. So I went to the, kings, to the governors of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. So he's going protected by a guard, a military guard of cavalry. That's men on horses for you young gener generation. So Nehemiah requests and receives permission and is given an order to rebuild the city. This is the beginning point. And this was on March 5th. Now, we're making one assumption here. 
We know that it was Mar that the, the month of Nisan was starting on March 5th, so the first of Nisan would have been March 5th, and that's, that's the assumption, it's the first. Uh, they've found, we have found so much archaeological evidence in the last 100 years, and it keeps coming up, that confirms and reinforces. But the date, this 20th year of Artaxerxes, that I read in the first verse, in the month of Kislev in the 20th year, and then later on in the month of Nisan in the 20th year, we know that that was the year 444 years before Christ. And you can, I recommend that you read the book, Chronological Aspects of the Life of Christ, if you're interested in this topic. The fulfillment, from the time the command goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince. And when did Messiah enter Jerusalem? Well, if you were around a year ago, I actually had the opportunity to preach on that subject. Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Rejoice greatly, daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, daughter of Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fowl of a donkey. Messiah entered Jerusalem riding a donkey. Who does that make you think of? Well, you can read it in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I'm not going to read those scriptures for you, but there you have the opportunity. And when did he arrive? Well, it was March 30th, the year 33 of the Common Era, year 33 Anno Domini, the year of our Lord, Palm Monday. Sorry about that. And if you want to check it out, you can go on YouTube and look it up. Although I don't, I don't know if that address is clear, but you can go look up the road to Easter 1 at uh, the Alum Rock website. So, now we have the beginning point and the end point. The beginning was March 5th, 444 before Christ, to March 30th, which is in the year 33 AD. Um, and if you add 444 plus 33, and then you have to take off a year. Because when they made our calendar, they made a mistake. They forgot there was, they forgot the year zero. They didn't add it in. So you have to take a year off. So we have 476 years times the astronomical year of 365.242198 days per year gives 173,855 days. And the, the difference between the 5th to the 30th is 25 days. So we get 173,880 days from the time the order was given to rebuild Jerusalem until Messiah enters in and is received as king. Hallelujah! Only God knows the future. Exactly the number of days from when the king gave the order to, to Nehemiah. And this was all a mystery until last century. Well, actually, sorry. I was raised in the 20th century, so until the, the, the 19th century, the, the, uh, they started to realize this. After the 69 weeks, Daniel writes this. There will be seven weeks and 62 weeks. It, referring to Jerusalem, will be rebuilt with streets and a trench, but in times of trouble, and of course, the times of trouble have not even stopped yet. After the 62 weeks, Daniel writes, Messiah will be cut off and will have nothing. He would be cut off on Good Friday, in the year 33 of the Common Era, Jesus, the Anointed One, the Messiah, was cut off. He was murdered. He was crucified. That means they killed him on a cross. He was sacrificed at the time the Passover lambs were being sacrificed. <laughs> but on Easter Sunday... The day after the Sabbath, after the Passover, when the Jews were to offer their first fruits to God, Jesus rose from the dead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me read that to you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, started with verse, starting with verse 20. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. This is Paul writing now. Paul says... Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One, has been raised from the dead. The first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. That's when they had to offer, make an offering of the first fruits. The day after, 
For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, Adam being the first man, so in Christ all will be made alive. If we are in Christ, the second Adam, we will be made alive, but each in turn. Christ, the first fruits then, when he comes, those who belong to him. Then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father after he has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to, to be destroyed is death. And it, I recommend you continue reading that chapter. Application. The God of the Bible knows the future. Trust in Messiah with all your heart and your sins will be forgiven because they have been paid for. They were paid for when Jesus said it is finished and died on the cross. We who trust in Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, we are promised a resurrection from the dead for eternity. So we suffer for a time and our bodies will become decrepit and fall apart and we will probably die if the rapture doesn't happen sooner rather than later. The last seven years are still future including the abomination of desolations. So, sometime in the future, maybe if God allows, <laughs> nobody knows how long they're going to live, part four, and maybe five and six, because that last week is a complicated scenario. And there's, not, there's a lot of disagreement, by the way. So I, I try to be open to different perspectives. But sometime in the future, if God allows, I will share on the last week of the 70 weeks of Daniel. May God bless you, and may he be honored in all that we do. Thank you, Andy, for your conclusion of the 70 weeks prophecy in Daniel. And we look forward maybe to one day hearing about that last week. If you have a question or another topic that you would like discussed on Wednesday Night Nuggets, please let us know. Call us at... 408-258-1237 or hop onto our website at alamrock.cc and drop us a line on our email. We hope that you have enjoyed the Wednesday Night Nuggets and invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 11 uh, with the link on our website, YouTube, or Facebook and join us for our Sunday morning celebration. Good night and God bless.